Hello, welcome. Today we're working on financial statement analysis, so let's get started with the introduction. If you're new, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, and what we're doing today is just talking about principles of accounting. We're in Chapter 13, the financial statement analysis chapter. I've got articles and videos and playlists of, of lots of these things in uh, accounting. So financial statement analysis we're going to look at the financial statements. So what are our financial statements? What information are we going to gather? Well, we're going to look at things like the income statement, which is, you know, revenues minus expenses. That's our recent performance. You know, how are you doing? And then you're going to look at the balance sheet, which is, you know, the assets have to equal the liabilities plus the equity. That's also our financial position. You know, where are you? How much assets do you have? How much debt do you have? We're going to look at cash flows, so cash receipts and cash payments, and how are we getting those cash receipts? Are they coming in operating activities or investing activities or financing activities? And then we may look at statement of stockholders equity or some kind of retained earning statement to look at the equity, what the owners own, and what the dividends are. And then sometimes we have to look at the notes to the financial statements, which includes significant ac accounting policies, how do they do depreciation, how they do inventory, so on. Now, financial uh, statement analysis has really three different activities you can look at. You can do horizontal analysis. And so if we take a company and look at maybe two years, you can figure out a dollar change in like net sales or net profit or net income or the dollar change in cash, the percentage change, or some kind of trend analysis. So horizontal analysis is taking financial information and looking at year to year and the trend and the percent change. Now vertical analysis is also called common size analysis. So what we do is it's hard to compare companies because the how large they are, maybe millions of dollars, maybe even billions of dollars. And so we would do a common size analysis and make, for example, on the income statement, we would make our sales to be 100%. So on vertical analysis or common size, we would set sales to be 100% and everything's a component of that sales number. And so we get to a profit Maybe we make a 10% profit. So for every dollar in sales, we have 10 cents of net earnings or net income or net profit. Now, also we could do the same thing for assets. Now, what, what is the big part of the balance sheet? Well, a component of assets here, total assets. So we would set assets, total assets to equal 100%. So if you see this, you know that's vertical analysis or common size analysis. Now, we do a lot of ratios and we have financial ratios and we're figuring out, well, what would it be in terms of the numerator divided by the denominator, come up with, you know, how much is uh, the current ratio or the return on assets or the net profit margin. Now, the way we can compare we can always compare a company versus itself, so one year versus a previous year. We can compare it versus a competitor, our company versus a competitor. We can compare our company versus an industry, or we can set some kind of guideline or some kind of standard and compare it. In other words, we want a profit margin of, say, 10%. And so you could do maybe, if you're looking at investment analysis, so one of the things you might do is figure out, hey, I want to make sure we have a profit margin greater than 10%, and then you start looking for companies that meet that standard. All right, let's do another thing here. Let's talk about the financial ratios. Here we have different categories, and we'll get into, uh, quickly we'll get into actually some of the financial ratios. But if you want to remember the acronym POMS, we have profitability, activity, liquidity, market-related, and solvency. So what is profitability? Well, these are ratios that relate to margins, profit margins, or, or just profit. And so we look at, we care about the profitability of the company. A for activities relates to efficiency margins and turnovers, 
And so we figure out, well, how well are we collecting inventory or selling inventory, collecting receivables? Liquidity it relates to short-term debt. And then market ratios uh, relate to stock prices and earnings per share and things like that. Now, solvency is long-term debt. Now, we have two. We really care about the ability to pay our debts. So we have two different uh, debt measures. We have liquidity, which is short-term debt, and we have solvency, which is long-term debt. Let me give you an example of a financial ratio. For example, net profit margin. We have net income divided by net sales. So if our net income is 47,000 and our net sales is 500,000, then what we would have is a net profit margin of 9.4%. Now, what does that mean? Well, for every dollar in sales, we're making about 9.4 cents in net income. Now, I happen to have Apple financial statements. So let's look at their, theirs real quickly. We have net sales and we have net income for the most recent year. Let's plug in and figure out what the profit uh, margin would be for Apple. So our net income, that's going to be the bottom line, right? So the net income is 96,000 for the current year. So 96,000. And the net sales at the very top is going to be 383,000. And so that's in terms of millions. So this is really not 96,000 and 383,000. This is in millions. So this is $96 billion of net income on sales or revenues of $383 billion. So the net profit margin for Apple in the most recent year is 25%. So every dollar that they've earned as sales, they get to keep as 25 cents in net income. So that's how you look at the beginning of financial analysis. So watch the next videos and you'll see how we do lots of things in financial statement analysis.